Hey, hey everyone, Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. So we are just wrapping up our family quarantine as we try to survive this corona craziness. And I'm really excited for the message I get to share with you today. It was actually filmed a while ago before corona became part of our vocabulary. But it's about two things that lots of us are thinking about these days. We're thinking about people that we can reach with the good news and the hope of Jesus. And we're thinking about the way we love each other in this new world. We're going to jump back about 2,000 years to the night before Jesus died and a special prayer that he prayed. And in that prayer, he talked about the power of the love we have for each other. That if a watching world could see the compassion, the humility, the kindness, the gentleness, and the generosity that we have as Christians, they might be drawn towards the light, the love, and the forgiveness of Jesus. So, I hope you're surviving Corona. I hope you enjoy this message, and we'll talk to you soon. If you're a Christian, how much would you be willing to pay for a plus one pass to heaven? Did you know when I was um, 17, uh, when I had plans to study business at UW Madison, I opened my Bible. And I, I read something that Jesus said, and I had this spark in my heart that I wanted to become a pastor uh, for the first time in my life. And right about that time, I actually made God a promise, and my promise to him was this. Um, God, if you, if you change just one person, the next 50 years would be worth it. If I have to go to work, you know, not just one day a week like some of you think, but, you know, day after day and year after year. If I spend the next, like, 40, 50 years, my entire ministry, my entire career, and just one person, like, meets Jesus and gets changed, it would be totally worth it. Uh, I said to God, I'll trade you a life for one person. Because, honestly, what is 40 or 50 years next to someone's forever? And if you're not a follower of Jesus just yet, I really hope you think about what I just said. But literally, I'm not being dramatic or exaggerating. I would trade the rest of my life for you to trust in Jesus. In fact, the, the Apostle Paul said in the Bible that he would actually trade his own eternity if the people he loved would trust in Jesus and be with him forever. If that was even possible, Paul loved them so much he would do it. But I wonder if you've missed something. Because the other day I opened my Bible to John chapter 17 and I read something that Jesus prayed the night before he died on the cross and it was actually about this topic except Jesus didn't say a word about websites or social media or where you park or where you sit. Um, he said something about the go route that I'd never thought of before. Something that, that he said had the power and potential to actually make the people that you know and love interested in loving Jesus a little bit more. And I, today I want to share Jesus' words with you. It's actually a prayer that he prayed to God. But I want to warn you up front before I open my Bible, it's kind of confusing. All right, so, so I have this theory that uh, Jesus was like spending a lot of time in a boat with his fishermen buddies. And I think they kind of got philosophical at times. So sometimes they speak in like these really weird, like the words make sense, but they're really hard to get your brain around, okay? So if you kind of dozed off on me for a second, I need you to turn up your brain power to full blast because we're going to try to understand the thing that Jesus prayed to connect our community to his compassion and his love. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. So not just the disciples who were with Jesus in the room that night. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, which kind of includes you, right? Any future Christians who believe in the message that the apostles preached, Jesus is praying for us. And here's the reason that all of them may be one, Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you've sent me. He says, Father, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. 
I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. And so here's Jesus' logic. You know, he says, the Father and I love each other. And, and if you can love another sh- person in the church, if you and I as fellow Christians can have love that's just as the Father has for the Son, then the world will know that Jesus is not just a guy, but that he's the Son of God. So if you're taking notes in your program, here's the big idea. If I was going to put it in one sentence, I, w- I would say this. Uh, that Jesus prayed that we would be one to prove that he is the one. So, uh, what does this look like practically? Uh, I'm going to invite my friend Dave to come up on stage with me. He's going to be my brave and bull von- Dave just found out about this about 10 minutes before church started, so he's going to do a great job. Would you give our friend Dave a round of applause as he comes up? <laughs> Woohoo! All right, Dave, I'm going to have you stand over here. So practically, if, if Dave and I are going to love each other well, we have to master three things. And you're going to have to master these same things in your life too. We're going to have to master the fist bump, the handshake, and the man hug. Oh, that's a good man hug right there, right? <laughs> well, you're very impressed by that hug. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, here's what I mean by that. A, a fist bump are when two people make a fist and they bump it. Y'all write that down? That was pretty good there. I went to school for a lot of years, so figure that out. Now, here's what that represents if you're taking notes. That when, when Dave and I both hold on tightly to the word of God, we can love each other as Christians in really practical ways. All right? if, if Dave tries to give me a fist bump and I'm not holding on tightly, like, yeah, it is awkward, isn't it? You can have a sweaty hand and everything. <laughs> so as Christians, you know, if, if we're completely united, which the Father and the Son are, right? They don't agree to disagree on what's true and what's not. They hold tightly to the same truth. That's part of their love and their unity. And, and so when Dave holds on to all the teachings of Jesus and I do the same thing, uh, there's great love in the church. Which brings us to the second thing, the handshake. Uh, a handshake is when you open up your hand and you shake it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty deep here today, folks. <laughs> now, I think of that as like the opinions that Dave and I are going to hold about stuff that's not in the Bible. You know, Dave's a hunting guy. You're rocking some camo today. I don't know how to shoot a gun and it's too cold outside for me. So I, I play soccer and, and read books. But, you know, if we don't fight about stuff that's not in the Bible, we keep an open hand, then we can shake in love. When, when he and I can do church together, we don't just get caught up in all the, you know, opinions and preferences and I like this and you like that. When we're more concerned, like, about our unity and connection, we're going to, you know, if he and I both hold on to everything, we're going we're gonna to fight instead of having fellowship. So part of true Christian love is just letting stuff go and he's going to do the same thing and there's connection and love. And there's the final thing we have to master, which is the hug. So if Dave stands over there and I stand over here, it's going to be hard to hug from a distance. (laughs) Now that's awkward. (laughs) Right? So there's two things you need to hug another human being. It's our our final note here. You have to stay close, but not closed. Right? So I have to stay close to Dave. I I have to be close enough to his life and he to mine. But then we can't be closed off, you know, if we have our arms crossed and we try to hug. Just go with it, man. Just go with it. <laughs> right? So you've got to be close to someone's life and then you've got to kind of open up, right? So the man hug starts when guys are open to one another and you get close that way. Right? So if we're going to come to church, we actually have to invest in each other's lives but then we can't fake it. We can't be superficial and say we're good when we're not. We have to open up. We have to confess. We have to encourage. And if he and I can do those three things, if we both can hold on to the word of God, if we can be chill and humble with our opinions and if we can live in real fellowship, be open and yet close, we'll have the love that the Father and the Son have for each other. All right, let's give Dave a round of applause. Thank you very much, brother. Good job, man. <laughs> All right. Um, do you know why Jesus prayed for that? Because all of it is incredibly hard. You know, I, I can crack jokes up here and, you know, we can laugh and fill in the blanks, but all three of those things will probably be the hardest things you do this week. Like, to hold on to the word of God is hard. Um, be, being wishy-washy and, like, spiritual but not religious, that's easy. 
picking from the Bible buffet and saying, I like this page and I don't like that page and I agree with what Jesus said here, but I don't, like, that's easy. Anyone can do that about anything. You know, saying you're going to walk away from a church because you don't agree with that just because you don't agree with that. It's, it's your opinion. I mean, that, that is so easy. Anyone can do that. To be like the chameleon who believes one thing when you're with these friends and another thing when you go off to college and another thing when you're having lunch with grandma, easy. But to hold on to it, to say, Jesus, man, if you're God, if, if you rose from the dead and you said it, it's true. And so for two people to like hold on to that with truth and pursue it is, is really hard. And that's why Jesus prayed. Um, I think especially like in our day of what the world tells you about you. Um, I dare you this week, check out on like t-shirts and social media feeds and commercials how often the word self is used in modern day America. You know, you have to, you have to treat yourself and you have to be true to yourself and you should trust yourself. Every, every Disney movie and t-shirt for nine-year-old girls at Justice is about you being true to yourself. But you know what Jesus would say? Yourself is messed up. <laughs> like when, when your mama and daddy made you, they, they passed on the messed up thing that was in their heart in, into your heart. Like you, you can rationalize all sorts of things. You can talk yourself into crazy ideas. You can minimize sin. Don't, don't, don't do you. Do what God said. <laughs> and, and like to hold on to that, the like countercultural stuff that Jesus said is really, really hard and not many people will do it. But I don't think that's uh, nearly as hard as the handshake. Um, being super opinionated about your opinions, that's easy. Like ho hopping from church to church because it gets difficult and you, you butted heads, easy. Digging in your heels, expressing yourself, being true to what you think and feel, super easy. <laughs> like being that person who's going to hold to this opinion and cause a faction in the church, Super easy. But to open up that hand and be humble enough to care more about a relationship than being right, that's hard. Uh, I've been a pastor for, what, almost 12 years now. And, and I'm trying to think of all the tension that I've seen among Christians, like a lack of love and unity. And, you know, I'd say 99% of the time, it has nothing to do with the Bible. You know, people fight about church budgets, they fight about musical style, they fight about what you should wear to church. Like, God doesn't care what you wear to church. He cares if you love the people who are at your church. You know, and so Christians, like, we just get jacked up because we want to hold on to everything and fight about every opinion and, and write a blog and make a comment and Jesus doesn't care. He cares about love. And so it's hard to open up that hand and like stand on the truth but just the truth and nothing more. But honestly, I, I don't think this or this is anywhere close to as hard as, as the hug. Like doing your own thing, easy. C coming to church, calling yourself Christian, easy. Having like your budget for, for your family, your schedule for your life, super easy. But being close to another person, to love them in ways that actually take time, and cost you energy and money? Really hard. It's no accident that when Jesus told the story of, of the Good Samaritan, it was two very religious people who walked by on the other side of the road. I'm, I'm sure they were busy and they had things to do. And love that day didn't fit into their schedule. And, and that's the hard part. Like, if we're actually going to be close as a church, we can't just run in our own lane. We have to care about people. We can't just even sign up for a life group and think it's community, but to believe that the people in that group are the ones we're going to love in, in a deep and profound way. And then to be open. <laughs> Man, the, the church is famous for faking it. You know, where we say we're good and we're not, when we have questions about our, our gender, our bodies, our identity, our sexuality, forgiveness, marriage, divorce, we don't talk about that. Like, like we keep it closed even if we're in the same room as other Christians. And, and so to be open, like to, to honestly confess 
to come to the church and, and be real about whatever's going on that is really hard. It, it's risky and it's embarrassing. And I think that's why Jesus prayed. I mean, he knew the clock was ticking. He was about to go to the cross. He only had like a few more sentences with his heavenly father. But he knew it would take like a supernatural answer to the prayer of Jesus himself for you to hold on to the word, let go of your opinions, and actually do a loving life with other people. So I wonder right now how, how God's nudging you. And as I talk through those three things, was there one where you just kind of like felt the heaviness of it? Because God cares so much about the people that would watch if, if he did it. And so, you know, maybe this is the week that, that you're going to get serious about the teachings of Jesus. You're going to stop believing that crazy lie that doesn't even make sense when you think about it, that whatever you just believe is probably true. Oh my goodness, no. You're going to have to get serious about the teachings of Jesus. What did he say? What didn't he say? What is truth? For some of you, maybe the Spirit is, is nudging you, like before this day is done, you're going to get out your phone and you're going to send a text to someone that you felt tension with at this church. And, and you're going to admit, you, you know what? I cared so much about my own interests. I cared so much about this issue. The, the Bible doesn't say anything about this, but man, I was saying everything about this and I forgot about love. I forgot about us. And you're going to open up the hand and, and offer to reconcile. And for others of you, this is going to be the first time that maybe in your entire religious life that you're real. That church becomes the place where we, we actually confess and, and we admit if it's messy. This is going to be the, the place where we're going to invest in some deep relationships and it's going to cost us. So I'm going to have to budget for it and I, and I can't cram my schedule full with everything because there are going to be people I meet who are going to need my love and time and they need more than a text or a little emoji on social media. They, they need me to be there close. And maybe this is the moment that God's going to reroute like the purpose of your life. It, it's not to get rich or famous or powerful. It's to love people and love takes time. See, Jesus prayed that, that you would do something today because he knows the eternal potential if you do. If you're anything like me, there are people you deeply love. Like this year, this Easter, man, it, it would be the best gift of all if they would come to know Jesus. And Jesus says, I, I got a good way for that to happen. Love. Yeah, I was just imagining um, the other day the kind of stories that could happen this year at our church. Um, if we loved each other in like a weird way and it made the world wonder about Jesus. I was thinking like this daughter, she, she comes home uh, after the semester's over and she says to her mom, um, who are the flowers from? And mom says, oh, they're from uh, some ladies at my church. Um, they somehow remembered like the week that your father died four years ago. And the daughter says, really? They, they remembered that? Or this guy whose friends say, like, who's that dude from your church? He's, he's kind of awkward. To which the guy says, yeah. But you know what? God calls us to love in ways that don't exclude people but invite them in. And they say, really? <laughs> or one guy sitting shotgun next to his friend and he said, dude, no disrespect, but this is an embarrassing excuse for a truck. <laughs> when are you going to buy something new? To which the driver responds, well, I, I was actually close. I, I saved up the money, but uh, this family at my church like went through something and um, my friend was getting a divorce and he didn't, he didn't know if he could pay all the bills and get by, so I took all the money I'd saved up and I just gave it to him. And the passenger says, really? <laughs> or a woman goes through a divorce and uh, her, her college roommate shows up to, to help her pack and move and then seven cars roll up and she says, who's that? And the divorce woman says, well, that's my group. They were praying my marriage would make it but even though it, it didn't, they're not going to leave me. And she says, really? Or his, 
a guy's got a phone out during the playoff game and his buddy says, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm texting a guy from my church. Like he, uh, he struggles with pornography and, and so I try to encourage him and pray for him every day. And the friend says, you, what, you talk about that at your church? And the guy says, yeah. And he encourages me with my stuff too. <laughs> and he says, Really? Father, Jesus prayed, if they, if they would be one, the world would know that you sent me. That's what Jesus prayed for you this week. And while that might seem hard and maybe for some of us impossible, I can tell you this. When Jesus himself prays, nothing is impossible. <laughs> if the Bible says that the prayers of a righteous person in Jesus' name are powerful and effective, how powerful and effective do you think it is when Jesus himself prays. <laughs> and the night before he bed, he, he prayed for you. He prayed for our church, for everyone who would believe in him through the message that we would be one. <laughs> and you know the best part of all? Uh, he didn't just pray. Let me show you one last passage before I say amen today. Uh, in verse 22, Jesus said, Father, I have given them, the Christians, the glory that you gave me. I love that. Uh, do you remember what the glory is that God gave his son Jesus? Love. And Jesus says here, Father, I, I've given Christians that glorious love that you gave me. See, the most incredible thing that I want to tell you today is not to love each other better, but it's to open your eyes to like the, the glorious, ridiculous love that Jesus has for you. Did you know before the creation of the world, the Father and the Son had a conversation and, and the Father, in a way, asked Jesus, how much would you pay for a plus one pass to heaven? And Jesus thought of you and he said, Father, anything. And he wouldn't clear out his savings account, he would sacrifice himself. You won't follow a comfortable road, but one that led to a cross. So that you and, and I, people who, who struggle with this and with this and with this, we would know that we are one with God because Jesus is the one. He, he's the one who gave up everything and anything so that you could be forgiven and loved, so that this glorious truth could be true of you too, that you are one with God, not distant, not far, but close because his heart is open. Uh, it reminds me of the, the passage at Fox Valley Lutheran. I know some of you are, are students there and, and uh, maybe you remember that passage right there in the cafeteria before you, you leave out your cars. The passage that says, Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. <laughs> and that is a perfect passage. Like, are, are you Christians? You heard about Jesus in the school. Now imitate God. The God who is so united in love, I want you to go act like that when you're out in the world. I want you to love each other that way. <laughs> but I love the fact that then there's a comma and not a period. Be imitators of God, comma, as dearly loved children. <laughs> it's like you're not just the children of God. That, that would be ridiculous. You're not just the loved children of God. That would be ridiculous-er. You are the dearly loved children of God, which is the ridiculous S. I don't know if that's a word, but it should be because that is crazy that after all of our struggles and all of our sins, God says this glorious thing, you are my son whom I love. You're my daughter whom I love. With you, I'm well pleased. So this year, if you want those people to trust in Jesus, you should keep investing, keep inviting, keep evangelizing, but, but don't forget this, to love. To love the person sitting next to you. Brothers and sisters, it, it would be the greatest thing in the world if this church was not known for this massive screen or for a style of music or for sermons on TV, but for the way that we love. If that light shines brightly, people will see our good deeds and maybe, maybe, maybe one day they will praise our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your love. Um, 
If I were you, I never would have paid that price, but your love is supernatural and profound and we are so grateful for it. God, I pray for everyone who's on the fence about faith, everyone who's unsure that you are actually the son of God, that the price that you paid would just make them think that no one in the world would be that sacrificial and selfless except you, except God. I pray, God, for the kind of character it's going to take to live this message this week. We need your Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of love in all of us because it's going to be so hard in in those moments. So give us patience. Give us gentleness. Give us self-control. Give us kindness. Give us the peace and joy that we need to love each other well. God, this week our, our church celebrates 10 years of existence. On April 19th, 10 years ago, we we opened the doors and we have seen people whose forevers have been changed. We've celebrated as people's sins were washed away in baptism. We've seen people who grew up religious but they never had a relationship with you. And we're so grateful, God. Thank you for the love and community that has existed in this place. We're not starting from square one. But we pray in your mercy that you would move us even further and faster. There's so many people, God, that we care about and we have We have no idea how much time we have left. We want them and we know that you want them to be with Jesus forever in glory. So help us to love passionately, sacrificially, abnormally, that they would believe that you, Jesus, were sent by God. We pray this all with confidence because we know who we are. We're not just people. We are your dearly loved children. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you ever get stuck in the what ifs of life? What if the counseling doesn't work and the marriage doesn't make it? What if God's forgotten about me? What if he isn't hearing my prayers? What if? These are all the questions that rob us of our confidence and our joy, but they don't have to. I can't make you a promise today that God is going to instantly erase all of those what if questions, but I can make you this promise, that what Jesus said and what Jesus did is the answer to every what if. And that's why I'm so excited for you to pick up this new resource from Time of Grace called Just As He Said. This booklet has a special meaning for me. 20 years ago, back when I was in college, and I know I'm dating myself a little bit, a new man came to be the pastor of my home church. His name was Dr. Paul Kelm. And although I didn't get to hear Pastor Kelm preach Sunday after Sunday, when I would stop home during my breaks, I would pick up these old CDs and listen to his messages on the long drive back to school. And it always struck me that Dr. Kelm had a way of taking a scripture I thought I knew and peeling back its layers. Through a mixture of devotions, Bible passages, prayer prompts, and journaling suggestions, Dr. Kelm was going to convince you that our God, our Savior Jesus, is greater than every what if. Just like he said. Just as he said is our way of saying thanks for your support in helping others find joy in Jesus too. Request your copy by calling 800-661-3311, visit timeofgrace.org, write us at P.O. Box 301, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53201, or text TIME to 313131 to give today. Time of Grace doesn't end here. We offer so much more. Visit us at timeofgrace.org. You'll discover resources to help you in your walk of faith. These include blogs, Grace Moment devotionals, and our prayer wall. You can also stay encouraged with our daily video devotionals. Connect with us on social media. Join our Facebook group where you'll meet a strong community of believers. Follow us on Instagram and get an inside look at our ministry. And if you need someone to pray for you, Call us or visit our prayer wall. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you here again next week.